Yes. Oh, he's, oh, 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 what a good boy. Thank you, Mr. Milo. I love you so much. You're my best friend. Thank you. Well, hi there. I'm Professor Dan, and that was Mr. Milo. He's my best friend. And he may look like an ordinary dog, but he's not. He's a science dog. And what makes him a science dog? He's always asking questions. He loves to ask questions. And if you like to ask questions, why don't you come along with us? We're getting ready to head to the classroom and learn some interesting stuff. So come on. Well, hey, everybody. How you guys doing? Hey, thanks for coming back up here. We got something really cool to talk about today. As a matter of fact, me and Mr. Milo, well, let me show you what Milo and I were just talking about a little bit ago. Actually, I was trying to clean up the house. So check this out. What's that? Why don't you drag your food out here? I gotta vacuum it all up. How does the vacuum work? Hey, let's go upstairs and I'll tell you, okay? So yeah, so that is what we were talking about is how the vacuum works and how it cleans. But you know what? We are not going to be talking about the vacuum. As cool as this vacuum is, which I'm sure you guys are very jealous of my vacuum, and it works really good, and I hope you guys use your vacuum to help your mom and dad clean the house, because that's important. Those are responsibilities we all have at home is to help. So, but we're not talking about this vacuum. I have a different kind of vacuum I want to teach you guys about. Let me put this down and I'll show you. So. Milo doesn't like this vacuum too much because it kind of freaks him out. So, and I understand why, it's kind of noisy. But anyway, so the vacuum we're talking about is when something leaves a void or a space. So let me, show, let me show you how to spell vacuum. I love this word, it is so cool. Check this out. So, let me get my little sign down here. Oh, this is cool. Hey, did you guys read this? Oops, let me get over here so you can read it actually. There you go. That's a little bit, I know there's some glare on it. It says, you never fail until you stop trying. Does that make sense? You never fail, it means it doesn't work out for you until you stop trying. And I believe that, don't you? As long as you keep trying, you might be able to work it out. But when you stop trying, it'll never work out. So. Don't ever stop. Always keep trying if it's something you really want. Never stop. So let me take care of this. We're gonna do this and I gotta get this and we're gonna make this disappear so fast. Hey Wally, how you doing bud? Did you guys say hi to Wally? Wally's here and my paper towels because you know me, but Wally's here. Hi guys. So he wanted to check out what we're doing today because he thought vacuums sounded pretty cool. So he's gonna hang out if you don't mind. Okay, so that's gone. Oh my goodness. So the word I wanted to show you guys was vacuum. And check this out, it's kind of awesome, I think. V-A-C-U-U-M. Vacuum. Isn't that an interesting spelling of a word? V-A-C-U-U-M? Vacuum? But that's it. I just wanted to show that to you because I really like that. I think it's awesome. You don't hardly ever see a word like this. Vacuum. But you guys have probably seen it because you got a vacuum probably at home. So, and you know how important they are. They suck things up and make your house all clean. Because your mom says, go clean your room. And she says, don't forget to what? Vacuum, yes sir, thank you much. So, always make sure you vacuum because you don't want a dirty floor. So vacuuming. Vacuum again, it means that there's a space left. There was something there and it's gone, okay? And these, uh, or I'm gonna say, these uh, demonstrations will kind of give you an idea of how that works, especially with liquids, because liquids are fun and it's easy to show how things work. So, let's start out with this one here. This one's kind of cool. I do like this one a lot, I have to say. So. This is one you're all really familiar with. I have the beautiful glass of red wine. Actually, it's just water with red food coloring. But that's what we got going on here. So we put that down there and let me get, do you know what I have here? I have a mega straw, mega straw. Did you guys see my mega straw? It's like really big. And I'm gonna use it to show you how this works. And you guys have probably done this already when you've been, you know, go to a restaurant or something, you get a drink and you get a straw and in your straw, then you stick it in your drink and 
maybe you blow bubbles and then your mom or dad says stop doing that and then you do I hope so but with this little straw or tube I can show you a little bit about vacuums so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it right in the cup all right and then as you can see the fluid the liquids at the same size as a straw it doesn't go any higher or lower than the straw I get that really close to you okay now if I pull the straw up nothing changes the fluid stays the same level in the cup but if I put my finger over the end I gotta put it over really really tight really tight and then pull up what do you see what do you see there guys uh, yeah it's still in the tube now if I let go of the end of the tube watch what happens to the fluid Whoop, it goes back down now the reason that happened was we sealed the end of this with our finger with my finger so air couldn't get in because when you move the straw like this air fills that up that space but where the liquid is in the straw that space when you pull it up the pressure outside and you can't see the air pressure is pushing the liquid down to this level and it's going the air pressure is in the straw too so as I move the straw the air pressure fills in the space so it keeps pushing the liquid down now if I put my finger over the end the air pressure around us can't go into the straw and fill the space so what happens is it creates low air pressure and that low air pressure won't let that fluid come out it doesn't fill back up it doesn't fill that tube with air to equalize the pressure but if I remove my finger like you saw my finger down here watch I move it and it does that because the air pressure equalizes okay so how about that I thought that's kind of cool so when you actually drink you're removing the air pressure that's covering this and it's drawing the fluid the, the fluid is coming back up your orange juice or milk or water or whatever is coming up all the way into your mouth and and it does that you're creating a vacuum in that straw in the tube so the fluid comes up to fill in that vacuum okay again we can do that we can cover the end lift it up and it stays in and if you move it it goes down and I know you guys have probably all gone and taken a straw and stuck your tongue over the end and then pull it up and then move your tongue off the end and it all comes out the straw right I'm sure you've done it. I do that still I think it's kind of awesome so and then my wife says professor Dan you're embarrassing me please stop doing that at the restaurant people are staring and I go I'm sorry because she thinks that because I'm a grown-up I can't do stuff like that well I think I can so I do and if nobody likes it too bad I'm not hurting anybody so I don't recommend you to do it though if your mom and dad says don't do it you should you need to listen to mom and dad but when you become a grown-up that's a whole nother story but we won't go there so that is how this little tube equalizes the pressure when you move your finger the outside pressure around us that we see there's pressure on us all the time you just can't see it and what keeps us from being crushed and turned into tinfoil is our mass is the fluid within us held within our structure of our body actually that helps to hold us together our pressure air pressure around us helps us to stay together a little bit so anyway there's air pressure around us and this is air pressure right here this is a perfect example cover it up lift it up and we're not allowing the air pressure to equalize so it stays in here when you allow the pressure to equalize boop, it goes back down so that's one thing I wanted to show you you like to have some of that it's just water it's okay I'll leave it there you may change your mind so okay the next thing I want to show you is really fun too and you can do this um, here let me get this going this is so cool now this is just simply a glass glass jar no big deal I put a piece of paper around the back white paper so you can see it good up here in the front okay all it is is colored water again it's water I just put a little food coloring in so that you can see it easier and you can do this at home but what you might want to do you probably don't have one of these glass big pretty glass containers but you do have a big pot probably like I do and you can put water in it and you can play inside this 
Okay, you can put food coloring in that and do the things that I'm gonna show you. Or you could use the kitchen sink, or maybe even the bathtub. If you have to take a bath, you can play in the tub with this stuff. But always ask an adult permission to do these things because they don't want you getting this stuff out and making a mess. So just ask, it's not a big deal, but you do need to ask mom or dad, okay? So that is important. Okay, so we have this really cool jar here with just water in it. Now, I'm gonna take, I have a glass, just a regular old glass, no big deal, just the regular glass. Okay, so I gotta be careful because I don't wanna break anything. But with this, I can show you guys how pressure works all around us, air pressure. So, now you know if you put a glass in like this, what happens? And push down, it pushes the water level up, right? We're displacing something. We're displacing matter. We're displacing this fluid. By putting this cup in, it's taking up more space so it pushes the water up. So we're displacing something. See the water level? I put the cup in, and the same volume the cup has, it displaces the water. Because this space here, this cup space, is taking place. I mean, it's taking the space. It's taking place, it's taking space. I can't get my words right today. I'm so sorry. So, that's what that does. Okay, so we've done that. Oh, I need my paper towel. Oh no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I am Stretch Armstrong. Look at that, I reached it. Okay, so I wanted to clean off my glass. Doing okay there, Milo? Oh, Milo's down there too, sorry. Wally's here, Milo's down there. He's just kind of hanging out. Peace, bro. All right, so now we take this glass and if you turn it upside down, like this, like this, what do you think might happen when we try to put it in the water? You've probably played with this in the tub or a pool. If we take a cup and put it in and hold it completely level and push it down, it does the same thing as if we put it on as we just did, right side up. Because the air is still inside, the air didn't come out. So it's displacing the fluid, it's pushing it up. Now. Here's something interesting. What happens if we turn this cup sideways a little bit? <gasps> What's happening? The air is racing out from underneath because it's less dense. For one thing, we talked about density in liquids on another video, but it's less dense than the water, so it escapes. It comes up above and it gets out of the way because it's lighter than water. So we do that. It's kind of like farting in the tub too, but my wife would get mad if I said that. So I'm really not gonna say, it's kind of like farting in the tub when you get those bubbles like that. So now what happens? Now we have some liquid in inside the cup, right? And we have air, but air is lighter than water. So what happens? So the air goes, stays in the top part of the cup and there's green water down here. Now if I keep pushing down, my fingers get wet, but you can kind of see a little bit that down here there's green water inside the cup and then there's air up here, right? So if I tilt it a little more even, we just place even more air out of the cup and more water fills the cup, right? Now here comes a really cool thing, watch this here, when we go to lift it up, Watch, watch what's gonna happen. We start lifting it up, and what do you see in the cup? What's in the cup now? I haven't pulled it out of the water yet. Do you see that? Do you see the water inside the cup? Okay, and that has to do with pressure. There's less pressure inside, so it's pulling the water up with it. And what else did we learn about water, guys? Water has cohesion, right? There's cohesion in water. And the water wants to stick together, so it doesn't want to let go of itself. So it's all holding together until I finally pull it hard enough and break that surface tension. We talked about that too. There's surface tension, and the water molecules are cohesive. And just to show you one other thing we learned, if I can put that up here. Oh, I can't get them both in there. Silly. Can you see the, can you see the water a little bit here? 
Can you see the water there on the cup, on my glass? See the water drops? That's adhesion. We talked about that. Water likes to adhere to things. It's kind of sticky, so it sticks to the glass. But water has cohesion, which causes it to stick together. So it doesn't like to let go. And then when I finally broke the surface here, when I pulled it out, it went boop. We broke the surface tension and we equalized the pressure so the water could fall back down. So that's how that kind of works. Wasn't that awesome? We put the glass in, we turn it. What happens if we almost fill it? Like that. Oh, I can't drop it. If I drop it, I can't get it out. So, all right, we've got it almost, well, it's pretty much all the way in there. Look at that, guys. All right, so what happens if we try to lift it out? Check it out. We're pulling up. The water that's in here is pulling up inside the glass. Isn't that cool? It's inside the glass because of the pressure. Okay. There's low pressure, so it's holding it in there. Now it wants to equalize, so when I finally break the surface tension, when I finally pull this up high enough, it'll break the surface tension of the water. And listen. Excuse me. Mm, too much pizza. Ah. So that's what happens though. The air pressure equalized and it released the water back down into the container. So that's how pressure, air pressure works. You create vacuums, okay? By changing the air pressure, if you make a lower air pressure, you create a vacuum and it holds things. And that's what was going on in the cup. Okay, so that's this one. So you can do this at home. Very cool, just get permission from mom and dad to kind of play in a pot or sink or wherever, okay? So let me put this out of the way. I got one more thing I wanna show you, which is really awesome, okay? Cool, 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 cool. How you doing there, Wally? Oh, gotta clean up, gotta clean up, you know me. Got the clean up, I mean a nice clean area. So Wally, what'd you do this week? Not much of anything, just hung out. You and Milo, took naps. It's a hard life, it's a hard life there Milo. I feel for you buddy. You don't want any of this? Okay, no that's fine, I got you, that's cool. We'll get that out of the way. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys, you have to, have to, have to have an adult do this. I'm sorry but you can watch it with them. But it's so cool, I want you guys to see this. And it has to do with air pressure again, creating vacuums. So, check this out. What you're gonna need, what your parent or adult is going to need, is a plate, voila, a plate, and a candle. See? So what we did was take the candle and we melted a little bit of wax on the bottom of the plate. We turned, we lit the candle and dripped some wax and then we put the candle on top of the wax on the plate and let it dry. And when it does, it's like glue, it holds the candle in place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna need to move this camera down a little bit so we can get a little bit better view about what's going on. Okay, cool. So now the next thing we need is a glass. Voila, another glass. Okay, I got lots of glass as well. I'm using our glasses from the kitchen, but don't tell my wife. She'd probably get upset. She doesn't like it when I use our kitchen utensils for experiments. So if you guys do that, make sure to ask permission, please, from mom or dad or grandma or grandma, whoever's around. Don't just start taking stuff because they get upset because they say, where's that spoon I had? I just had that spoon somewhere worse and I don't know. So always get permission before you guys do these things, okay? But when you get permission, have fun. So we have our glass. Voila, glass, plate, okay? So next thing we're gonna do here, this is where the adult definitely has to start coming into play. We're gonna take some colored water, which I just happen to have here, one of my favorite colors, which you cannot tell because it is blue, camouflaged, blue, blue water, blue water, blue water, blue water. So we're gonna put water in the plate why are we gonna do that? Because it's part of the experiment. So we're gonna put a lot of water in there. Maybe in my plate, that's about a half inch, okay? So we have water in it, colored water. We have our glass, which is here. Now, the next thing we have to do, which you absolutely positively have to have mom or dad around. 
okay, we have to light the candle. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen with this demonstration? I light the candle, we let it burn for a moment, then I put the glass over top of the candle, and as the candle burns, it's going to start heating up the atmosphere, heating the air inside the glass. Okay, and there'll be, you won't see them because it happens really fast. There'll be some bubbles. Air will start to expand, it'll become high pressure, and it'll push some air out of the glass, and the air bubbles will come out from under the glass and up, but you, it happens so fast you don't see them. But that is what happens. And then the candle will finally go out because it's gonna burn all the oxygen that's in the, in the glass, in the air. It's gonna burn that because that's what flames use for fuel, is oxygen. So as all the oxygen is burned up, the candle will slowly get smaller and smaller and then it'll go out. And when it goes out, watch what happens. Okay, you'll wanna watch down at the bottom. So let me go ahead and light this. Okay, again, never ever ever do this. Always have your mom or dad or an adult there to do this for you. Got it? Got it, Wally? Yes, I got it, thank you. Cause you'll burn your little whiskers if you do it. All right, so you stay here, Wally. Oh, you got a fuzzy. We got another fuzzy. You've been picking your tusks or what? Okay, so the candle's going. Now, watch what happens. I'm gonna have to move. I wanna get this just right for you guys, so I'm gonna have to move the camera a little bit here to make sure we get good. Good English? No. So we do a good shot here. Okay, now I'm gonna put this over and watch the bottom where the glass touches the water. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. It's just colored water, it's okay. Okay, here we go. Now watch down here, watch this. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoop. Did you see that? Could you see that? Can you see where the level of the water is? It's actually about a half, a, half inch up into the cup. And what happened was the air inside got hot and then created high pressure. So the low pressure out here pushed the water back into the cup and up. Okay? <coughs> now, we have the water up here, so it created a vacuum. It, whoop. Okay? So that's what happened. You had high pressure, got to heat it up, and then the cool air out here, the low pressure, pushed the water up in there. When, that, when the air got cool, okay? So it was when the flame went out, all the water went up. So let's do this. If I lift it up, look at that. Whoops. And then I broke the suction, broke the vacuum that was there, okay? So let's clean a little bit up here. I think I made a wee bit of a mess. All right, so, and we talked about paper towels too. Remember how, oops. I need more paper towels. So, remember what we learned about paper towels? How do they work? It's absorption, yes it is, but what causes it to absorb? You guys remember? Capillary, remember? Capillary action. Capillary action is how the paper towel works. That's how it sucks up, capillary action. If you wanna learn about that, check out the how do paper towel work videos. So let's do that again, because I think that's pretty cool. Go ahead and we'll light that again. Again, only the adults get to light it. You guys don't. You guys just get to watch what happens. Okay, so the candle's going good. Now, we take the glass and we put back over it and watch what happens. Again, keep an eye down here. Can you guys see? The candle's going out, goes out, water level raises. When the candle goes out is when the water level comes up. So, can you guys see that okay? I hope so. It's pretty awesome when it happens. So, there we go. All right, let me clean this up and check it out. Oh, it created that vacuum and didn't want to let go. All right, that is absolutely cool and awesome. So I'm gonna put this out of the way. So did you guys have a good time? Did you learn a little bit about pressure and how things work? How pressure wants to equalize all the time? 
And if you don't allow it, you can create a vacuum and things will rise or fall. So around us, we're always, or the air pressure is always equalizing itself because that's how it likes to be, it's equalized. All right, when you suck on a straw, you de-equalize the pressure so things move, things change, trying to equalize. So, okay, let me get this out of the way. And, oh my goodness, where do I put it? I got so many things going on here, I don't know what to do. Oh, I can't spill that if I spill that. I'm in so much trouble. Whew. Okay, so I got that. So all this colored water, you know, it kind of makes me think of Kool-Aid. But what I'd really like is some lemonade. But the problem is with lemonade, it takes lemons. And I don't have any lemons. So, what, well, Wally? What do you think I should do? What do you guys think I should do? If I want lemonade, what should I do? And I don't have any lemons. What should I do? Hmm, I'm not sure. What's that, Wally? What? That string? You think I should pull on that string? Because all sorts of weird things happen? Hmm, I wonder. What do you think? Do you want me to pull on the string? Yes, you should pull on the string. Oh, I should pull on the string. Okay. Well, I will. And I remember you can only count to two. That's a problem. We got to work on that. Next time we're counting to three, okay? Okay. All right, so come on over here and check this out. So you want to help me there? Should I pull the string, guys? Yes, pull the string. Okay. All right, well, I don't know. Hold on, everybody. I'm going to have to make some lemonade, though, when we get done, because I am really thirsty. So, all right, one, two, because that's all harder he can count. Two, one, go! Ow! 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 <laughs> Ow! Ow! Ooh, these are lemons. I like lemons. I can make lemonade now. <laughs> oh, oh, they went kind of squishy on the table. Oh, they smell good. Have you guys ever smelled lemon juice? There's a cut in this one. Oh, I love the smell of lemon juice. It's so fresh and yummy. Okay, I'm gonna go make some fresh lemonade. So, me and Wally say thanks for coming. Hope you guys had a good time. Hope you learned a little bit about air pressure and some neat experiments you can do at home. So, until we see you guys again next time, and I need to get Milo, he's wandered out of here again because I know he'll want to say bye too. Until next time, guys, be good, and I'll see you soon. Alrighty? Bye-bye. Favorite ball in the whole wide world? Give me a ball. Come on, Milo. Give me a ball. Give me a ball. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give me a ball. Give me a ball. Go get it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Milo wanted to say bye, just like me. So.